had an okay spring split, but they had a coaching change that came when uh, they moved from spring to summer. And I don't think they've quite adjusted yet. Their meta reads and just decisions have been a little all over the place. How good would it be for the storyline if the, if Axis was able to find their first win against V3 Esports, but I don't imagine that's what we're going to be seeing here today. As we're keeping things moving along here, there, there isn't there isn't the most to talk about given just the the difference in standing between these two teams, but I do think there is hopefully some takeaways for Axis in this game, and I I hate to talk about like the game talk about the game like it's done before it is. But this is just such a this is such a battle for Axes, and especially as a team that really relies on getting ahead early, I don't I just don't think a team like V3 Esports is really going to be giving anything like that up. Ace and Boogie just er realistically the entire I I think in terms of individual lanes, uh, V3 is just a lot stronger. Uh, Ace, Ace is an okay solo laner. It's not that he's a bad solo laner, but he, he knows how to work with his jungler. He knows how to work things out there. And you can see by the graphs here, Natsume and Paz, there's even a difference there with Paz having more the benefit and of course it is easier to have higher stats when you're the winning team but you're the winning team for good reason so they go hand in hand and while we're just kind of running things along here I do think that V3, if there is any time to be trying out a couple things or to be looking at things like Aphelios counters or anything of that nature, this would be the game to do it as you can, it, this should be an environment that V3 should easily be able to control and we'll see how things end up shaking out for them as we get in this match soon now, what are the other things that I do just kind of want to talk about? And I think this is, I think this is definitely going to be one of those games where if you are looking at this game, you're not exactly going to be looking at V3 to have any huge outplay potentials or anything like that. This is a game where I really want to look critically at axes and kind of try to figure out and hopefully remedy a little bit of what's kind of been going on in their either their comms or their uh, or their bands or, or pick bands but really try to assess and figure out what's been going on for axes here while the nidalee band is first to come out v3 following that one with a fiddlesticks band a little bit of an understandable one removes a little bit of those off elements and we have seen we did see a fiddle six reaching the ljl only one in the jungle so far which is a good sign we do enjoy seeing that kind of thing in the ljl or you do enjoy seeing that kind of thing it's nice to always have some kind of like pocket jungle picks i'm thankful that we have not seen a whole lot of the uh tank fiddles as most 
mostly in the LJL picks like that aren't insanely popular, but Varus will be meeting the band table eventually. It's going to be sooner rather than later. But that being said, Axis have a couple of options here. Karma is still on the table, but Axis are going to lock in the bear right away. And in this scenario, similar to the last one, it offers that that a little bit of flex potential over to the Vola Bear, but then also this time set being banned away actually makes the difference because now it, you you do need to lock the Vola Bear. Uh, and, you, you know, it does offer a bit of flex potential. Passing over Karma is a little bit risky, but V3 are going to be drafting up the Ash thing to start things off here. And Ash is a great champion into Vola Bear. Kites him out very, very well. As Syndra is also going to be picked up by V3 Esports, and this is... Syndra is a champion we've actually been seeing hit the ban table a number of times. I'd be curious to see her pick ban percent, as we have not seen a whole lot of Syndra's coming out here, but Ace is going to be piloting that one in the mid lane. Well, Axe is looking at a couple picks here, and the Jin is going to be locked in here by Axe's Gaming. And I'm a little bit excited for Axes. That is going to be a first pick Jin of the split. I am a huge fan of Jin. I am a... I love the champion. It's easily one of my most played champions. I don't think he is currently in a great position. Uh, is how I would put it. But that being said, the champion does have a lot of tools that can be utilized. His W and ultimate are both very long ranged abilities that offer great catch potential. And then having, once you get a little bit more crit in your build, it becomes very easy to kite around fights as well as utilizing that fourth shot effectively to help finish off members. Jin definitely has his strengths. Although, the current meta doesn't exactly revolve too heavily around the ADC pools. As V3 are going to pick up Thresh to round out their draft. And the Echo holds a bit more flex potential. Can be put in either direction. Is decent in the mid lane into Syndra. Doesn't, uh, doesn't get beaten up too hard. Can kind of just throw Qs at the first couple waves. Until he gets a couple more abilities. And from there, it goes okay. Well, V3 taking away a couple more jungle options, or excuse me, a couple more support options from Axes. Well, Axes kind of have a couple bans to be looking out for. Banning away Wukong, Renekton, possibly another champion that could be banned away here, or Orn in, if they want to give V3 an opportunity to pose a similar comp to what we've seen earlier in the day. Boogie looking at the Lee Sin. We might see Trundle going unbanned, unpicked this game. If that is the case, and it will be, Boogie going to be piloting the Lee Sin here. And Axes have a couple picks lined up here, and it's a little hard to say what they'll be reaching for. We might see a bard alongside the Jin in the bot lane, but it doesn't offer the most amount of security for Jin into an Ash Thresh lane. But it's hard to say what you do pick alongside it as Leona going to be locked in here. Leona returning once again. The second pickup for Leona in the LJ in this week of the LJL, and I believe of the summer split in its entirety i can't recall seeing many other leonas but that's sort of how the meta has developed in the ljl a lot of attention has been given over to support uh, support position bans especially in the second half of drafts while corporal locking in the atrox here v3 are going to be looking at that renekton as a possibility and they will be locking it in. So, a nice fighty top lane that you can expect a decent amount of action from. 
And overall, it, the comps are somewhat set. The Renekton is a little bit of a pivot from the side of V3 Esports, where the Renekton is a, lo a little bit of early game focus, but can be utilized to help Boogie get ahead early on and hopefully start transitioning that power down the map. Sort of daisy chain passing any small victories up on the top side, pass them down to the mid lane, then pass them down to the bottom side. Meanwhile, on the side of Axes, there are, a, there's a couple, there's, there's things you can look for. You can move the Volibear and the Aatrox forward as a little bit of snowball, send them in as aggressive while Echo tries to dive a little bit deeper, and you can utilize the Jin's utility to try and catch people out, set up for your, for, set up for the top half of the map, and hopefully use like the W move speed bonus if you do get the root to try and get a little extra gap closer in there and start doing some damage. Fortunately for the site of V3 Esports is that you do have Scatter the Weak, Kick, Arrows, and Thresh to try and peel away Axes from being too aggressive. So we'll see if Axes are able to pull this one out. Clocklet did have a decent early game on the Volibear in the last game, we'll see if Boogie will let him have that same leeway. So we start this one up here. And as we start things up here, looking across the rooms, just fairly traditional things we've seen before. Although, interestingly, good I do actually opting in for Hail of Blades on Echo. And that's a little bit of an interesting one. It sort of plays for getting multiple hits off for your three hit passive very easy to just e in get the other two autos off even if your q misses and then use that as an opportunity to get to your passive proc which really deals a huge chunk of the damage that comes from echo that being said, it's, it, you're losing out on a little bit of the electrocute damage that you would otherwise have in that lane. And as well as Ace drafting into the phase rush means it's going to be a little bit harder for Gadaidu to keep pace because you don't get the move speed buff on Echo until after your passive is procced. So, curious to see how he plays that one out. Corrupting Pot will help out in getting a little extra damage from those autos. So he did start E in this lane, actually. Gadaidu should be first to level 2 in that lane. And speaking of lanes, the bottom lane is another one that we're going to be looking at. Critically, is, is Boogie looking for a level 2 gank? Taking time away from his blue buff to see if there's an opportunity here. Rain is cresting into that level 2 at any moment, but not going to be soon enough. Boogie is going to head back up to get to his level 3 as soon as possible before looking at an opportunity on the bot lane. Nice thing is, is that he has all camps up on this side, so he has a decent amount of time to wait for the wave to bounce if B3 are able to, to achieve that. And a Hawkshot spawning Hoglet out will know exactly where he is and spots a lot of the camps that he's done along the way. V3, the obvious favorites in this one given their standings in the split so far. As Gnaidu does his best to try and pick up some of that CS under turrets, a little bit difficult. Pause is going to be going for a trade here. Conqueror stacked up on both of them. Q's a little bit early and actually misses a lot of the empowered healing, is now forced to dash away, has flash available, but not going to be needed. Smartly held from Pause. I don't believe Natsume had Q up and ready to go for a Q flash. But not a bad position to be in. You will force the teleport out from pause. As he will pick up a Dorn shield and head back in the lane. Actually, somewhat unfortunate. Pause kind of popped the Q a second too early. 
and didn't get the extra healing that you get from it being over 50 fury put him in a little bit more of a dire situation than he needed to be well fortunately for him likely would have had to have backed anyway given hoglet's gank there Speaking of ganks, Boogie's going to look for a punish here on the aggression from Godaidu. Going very low. Ace is going to get the stun, but not going to be able to finish him off. No Electrocute or Ignite to help kind of bring the rest of that damage down, but Boogie's just going to help him shove in the lane. Going to fish for a Q here, looking for a Sonic Wave opportunity. As he dashes over the wall right into the face of Hoglet. Smites away one of his chickens, says... Yeah, I know you took some of mine on the other side, so I'm paying it back now as both junglers will be taking a reset here, getting their jungle items set up as Ace still with teleport for now, doing his best to try and shove in that lane. We'll return to neutral for now as the wave is actually in a great st great spot for pause right now. Level advantage, full fury. Natsume really needs to be careful on this top end of things. The wave will come into him eventually, so Ult doesn't need to be worried for too long, as Paz should look to expend some of that fury, but V3 looking for an opportunity onto Gadaidu. Stun is good. No flash opportunity as V3 is going to take that one in. Boogie's going to find the solo there, but meanwhile, on the top end of things, Paz is going to get targeted down. He's going to flash forward, but the E... Actually, no, I think it was a flash auto from Hoglet that ended up knocking him down in the end. But V3 finding first blood, a kill to each jungler. Gold benefit to V3, as well as picking up an Ocean Drake. The top lane gank is really a trading back of kills, but not a bad look from Axis. It's definitely what you need to do if you want to try and stay in this one. But V3 starting things off with an Ocean Drake and a first blood. Will help set up their position in this game. The sort of worrying point that I am currently looking at talk about after this one as we see the replay on the top side of things this is sort of an unfortunate position for pause where the wave wasn't quite under turret all the way and then once you're already committed to kind of fighting this one out with Natsume you get yanked back by the chains and nowhere you can really go it's good smite from Hong is going to win out on that fight as Boogie's going to be looking for an opportunity here. Reyna and Archer rotating up. But what I was going to say is each lane right now has a small CS lead. It's kind of been evened out up on the top side. But the bot lane CS lead for, for the Ash is speaking of pretty much exactly why Jin is not exactly one of the more common picks the other unfortunate part is that once they drafted into the gin there weren't a lot of support picks left for axes and gin is definitely one of those champions that in lane is just not as self-sufficient as he needs to be natsume popped the world ender there to try and find something on the ace who ended up backing up in the nick of time it was actually i don't think ace Boogie might have seen Natsume coming in, and that possibly was the reason he made the call to back away there. As Gaidu's looking for an opportunity here, thinking about it, but will spot Boogie out on that ward as he's crossing over into Axis's blue side. Gonna try to trade the blue buffs over here. Hoglet's gonna try to contest, but this is a Syndra. It's typically hard to do that, but Natsume's first on the rotation here. Boogie's gonna need to try to find it out. As a little bit of miscommunication, the kick is gonna dodge out on the stun, and Ace is gonna be forced to flash away, but that's a lot of damage over to him. Very, very low, as Godaidu's gonna look to try and finish him off. We'll see if he's gonna be able to do it. Hoglet and Natsume both falling on the opposite end of things, while Ace is getting away here. He may have just gotten out with his life. No, not quite, as Unyan's gonna be able to pick up that kill. The W root onto pause will buy himself some time. While Corporal's going very, very low, he will get burned down in the end. Boogie's going to flash over for that kill, and Boz is going to dash over the wall. And now Boogie should just be able to chase down here. There's no W cooldown available just yet. It will only come in a little bit too little too late. And Boogie got around this fight very well. Did he, Wait, was that an unofficial Penta for Boogie? I did not even notice that he got all five of those kills. 
an unofficial was it an unofficial penta i don't know if it was i think it got just a quadra but we'll watch this fight one more time as Godaido makes the call he's going all in onto ace he wants some kind of a kill and natsume is backing away waiting for his team he does okay but then it ends up oh he okay he did not get it he got a quadra pause did get the first kill of that set up there and then sure you have your bot lane rotating up here but Jin just does not do enough damage early on to really knock down any members of v3 here with the with the amount of speed required to really get things done and that's sort of the weakness of Jin is that he needs a couple items to really get going Does get a decent amount of damage off in that fight, but it's <laughs> as it stands, nothing in comparison to the way Boogie was getting around that fight, but that's going to be V3 going up about 2k gold in this game, and that was all the while Archer and Reyna were nowhere to be seen. They were on the bottom side. I believe they got a number of turret plates, which is partially accruing the gold advantage here. As Ace is going to look for something. Stun landed. Buki has a kick opportunity, but ultimate's still available on Gadaidu, so they can't exactly force that one out. Not even going to get his ultimate, but put him in a pretty poor position in the lane. Luckily, he has jungler here. Hoglet's going to just flash straight onto Ace. No scatter the weak means he's actually just going to go down there. Good punish from Axis, recognizing the situation. And a good punish on a miss on a lack of flash is a great way for Axes to try and find their way back into this one. Fortunately, Boogie's going to be the target of shutdowns at the given moment. Meanwhile, Mountain Drake on the rise. V3. They did they are a man down, but they do have a little bit of control to Axis' entrances towards this Drake and with no vision on it, Boogie's going to start it up already. A little bit risky as Union and Corporal are nearby, but they don't seem too concerned with it. It looks like top lane is a target while Hoglet is looking up there and it will cost them a Drake. They might go for the dive opportunity here. Hoglet can utilize the ultimate to Omrek or the turret if he so chooses. Paz is going to throw the stun out. He is going to pop Dominus. He's going to look for the chase here. Slice and dice in. The Q's going to deal a massive deal a massive amount of damage. As here comes Ace looking for a stun opportunity onto Hoglet. A decent amount of HP on him. And ultimate held for now. But Paz is going to be able to finish him off. Nowhere really Hoglet could run there. But now they find Natsumage running around the jungle. He has E to try and get over the wall. But Reyna should be here on the chase. Archer not going to hit him with the volley. But... It's all that really matters. Death sentence on to Natsume with or without the hook was going down there in the end. Unfortunately, Reyna did. <coughs> Excuse me. Unfortunately, Reyna did end up picking up the uh, did end up picking up the kill there, which you know could have gone over. But in the position V three is kind of in. What are you really to do? This is kind of, or excuse me, if you're in the position that Axis is in, it's looking grim. As while you do have some scaling, but you do have decent scaling potential. Echo scales fairly well into the later ends of the game, and while uh, Jin is a little bit of an odd case, where having front loaded damage on an ADC towards the later ends of the game does come up fairly valuable. The problem is, is that. Well, that problem will be hell. Is Archer's going to be the target here? Four men onto him strong. Will the lantern be enough to save him? It looks like it will. He will be able to live out on that one. A good cleanse and lantern from his teammate to help him get away from that. And another no opportunity might be coming on the rise as Boogie's going to look for a flanking opportunity. Can't get over there onto Natsume. Not going to land the stun though, so... His trigger for go is not given. Oh, Boogie's waiting in the wings here. It's just going to be able to take the 1v1 with Boogie. Kicks him out. The flash is good to get away. Oh, Boogie's looking for more. Needs to be a little bit careful. He's walking very deep in. He does know that Jin just used W and was not able to land it. So, you know, that is sort of a... 
that it's sort of that thing of yeah you know you're you're, you're fine but it, that sort of play just gets risky and when you have a 500 gold shutdown i always worry but boogie knows his limits fairly well as a very ex experienced jungler as we all know very well but what i was uh, to loop back to the point that i was making earlier is in the later stages of the game having a front loaded damage carry like Jin is somewhat beneficial towards the later ends of the game because one auto on either ace or archer is such a considerable chunk that it will it will affect the you know how far you can walk up and especially when you're counting in fourth shots and or just having a little extra cc those things sort of adds adds up and with no hard tank to really counter Jin in the later stages of this game it's a risk that V3 will need to consider if this game ends up going too late. For now, though, they have two Drakes. So, Infernal Drake stacking is an opportunity as well as getting towards that Infernal Soul. But Hoglet being a little bit greedy for some Krugs there will be pushed back out there. As V3 were really just biding their time for now, this Infernal Drake is really what's going to be their next target. But Paz is picking up a ton of gold here this is going to be his second turret in a few minutes now so he's going to look for a little bit of extended trade on natsume he has a two level advantage this should be his fight to take but here comes godaidu to try and turn the tides as flashing over or coming over the wall there with the e pause is just kind of duking this one out he has conquer for a good while the stun is good will you have enough damage to finish natsume the q will finish him off there now he has to try to figure out how to get out of that one as godaidu's gonna ult away cut off his escape as unyan's gonna do his best to kite this one out and collect that kill and a little extra shutdown gold on top Popping the ultimate now. This is a strength of Jin as you can see his kiting and you see his long range engage. But not quite going to be able to get there. Reyna coming in clutch for his AD carry. As V3 will secure the Rift Herald in trade and give Sindra a little bit of time to shove that lane under turret. As and now the bear running down Reyna seeing if he has an opportunity but none will present itself just yet. With Paws only coming off of respawn now. Axes assuming positions around the Drake. They'll need to set up as much vision as they can. And walking in for Corporal here is going to be how they do it. Although they don't have a whole lot of ward charges left over. So securing a lot of vision is not an option for Axes. They have not gotten a reset in just yet. They'll make the call onto the Drake all the same. And with Boogie not rotating over. Looks like V3 are content to pass this one up. They can pass over an Infernal Drake here. Although, maybe I spoke too soon. Some pings are coming out. As V3 are going to be looking towards the mid lane for an opportunity. Going to try to crack this map open a little bit wider. Throwing in the Rift Herald here. And now, this is where... This is one of those items for Jin specifically that is very, very important. Reaching the Storm Razor just adds so much. It's a great item for just that one auto. As an opportunity here almost gets a stun off, but gets stunned in return by the Crystal Arrow. And that's going to be Natsume. Knocked down there by a good snipe from Archer. And that's going to be V3's time to take as much as they like of this jungle. But Archer's going to be forced to cleanse there for just being a little bit greedy on some wolves. But the fight that ensues afterwards might be V3 favored as Corporal's going to be forced to flash it away from the slow arrows. It's going to be Paz picking up the kill onto Hoglet. That's jungler down. No objectives that they need to worry about being traded over. But a good punish and really only costing Archer his, his cleanse. V3 leaves no man behind and they will be able to score a turret for it and continuing to open up this map almost all of the outer turrets are gone at this point the question will really be if V3 are able to keep this Lee Sin's perfect game alive as Baron comes up in about a minute 30 that is the to speak to the downsides of Jin is that Jin is not exactly the fastest objective taker. He is a little bit better in the 
once the objective is low, as you can sink smite with fourth shot to have higher execute range. But that being said, it's a little bit more difficult. Er, Jin and Ash both aren't hyper damage carries onto objectives like Baron. So neither team really will be looking for a fast Baron take, but as it stands right now, V3 are just comfortable with setting up positions around it, and they can look for picks as much as they please with ace, fishing with ace stuns or just throwing out a couple enchanted arrows to see if you can find any members out there. And right now, the the big uh, the big red indicator for axes of what I look at and I'm worried about is Natsume. It's still level 10, but... Corporal's gonna throw down the ultimate there. Here comes the bear flying in with the ultimate. It's gonna be a one for one so far. AD for jungler. As Natsume is gonna look for an opportunity. Boogie's going to go golden. Will he have enough time to grab the lantern? He will. The stun's not gonna land from Garaidu, but here comes Paz. He's ready to brawl. As he's thinking about dashing in here. Can't quite get all the way into the lines of axes there. They will just take a one for one that will benefit axes overall as archer did have a small sh shutdown on him from the gold advantage but boogie not losing his life is really what's going to be the most important there as protecting that 600 gold shutdown is now a secondary objective for v3 their primary of course it's going to be this infernal drake coming up in about one minute Natsume coming down here onto pause and realistically pause should know that this is not a fight he can take There's always going to be someone waiting in the wings As he runs away scurries back off into the bush And the other thing I am excited for is that pause is going for the bork renekton which I love bork cleaver renekton It, it has kind of been a little bit debated how good it is in pro play specifically it is a great solo queue pick but it, it, people have been talking about how bork is somewhat of a win more item in the terms of pro play where if you're already in a position that you can afford to build bork without getting blown up then you're likely in a position that the defensive stats would be more beneficial that being said, Pause is saying, I'm here to run down my enemy laner. I am here to find Natsume and make him hate having to side lane against me. So Bork is definitely a great way to look at that, especially as Pause is rotating around here. Gonna be first to see Natsume as he's gonna look for right onto Unyan. The Bork is there to slow him down, but it will be the, the Corporal that stares down the sins of the side of Axis Gaming. While Pause is gonna be going very low, the Q healing not gonna be enough as... Union's gonna pick that one up, and overall was a one for two. Boz trading his life for the jungle top of Axis Gaming. But that'll mean an infernal Drake over to V3 Esports. As right now, even while Axes are all together and they're able to stay postured, fights just kind of break out in V3's favor. As it stands for right now, with Volibear being so far off to the side, there was nothing they could do to stop Paws from just running in on every member of Axis Gaming. Garaidu comes over the wall, but is forced to ult out immediately, and then at that point, you're just leaving your the brawling members out to dry. Echo doesn't do enough damage just yet to dive any carries, and your frontline doesn't isn't tanky enough to go toe to toe with the frontline of V3 Esports. So. It's sort of a damned if you do, damned if you don't position that V3 kind of find themselves, or excuse me, that Axis kind of find themselves in. As V3 approaching Soul, or at Soul Point now, benefit for Axis Gaming is that Union is cresting into his third item and getting towards that Infinity Edge is a huge power spike over to Jin, but a hook onto the bear is actually just going to Force out his ultimate there, and it's not what you want to see if you are Hoglet. Granted, no real objectives up just yet, but Axis could look to put pressure on the Baron, knowing that their primary engage tool, or the primary thing that keeps him as a frontline is 
gone down there and you can just see the damage that Paz is able to dish out with that Bork Cleaver combo. The Empowered W just does, does so much damage between the Bork and Cleaver passives. This guy is going to look for another stun opportunity but not one he can immediately follow up on. V3 are posturing hard to look for a game and there's a lot of cooldowns not available to the side of Axes here. As another hook's going to land here, Reyna is just going fishing. It's V3 after taking that trip, removing removing themselves and putting themselves up towards the top side. There's a lot of Axe's vision up there that they need to clear if they want to start threatening around that barren area. The other benefit that V3 kind of has in this moment is that Paz is kind of Paz has been the one that goes down in most of the plays that happen when you're and it's always been traded up. You've always traded Paz's death for two kills or sometimes three kills or more. But the benefit is that it keeps Paz from it keeps Paz from having a shutdown on him. He's been kept away from a shutdown, so he can be in the side lane solo, and it's not too risky. If they overcommit and he does go down on the bottom side of the map, sure, that is not ideal, but it could potentially mean a Baron for V3 Esports if they're set up on that side. And if they don't overcommit, Paz is still strong enough that he can run down Natsume with almost, a, almost now an item and a half advantage. Well, for now, they'll just scour away the jungle. And this is this is the tried and true LJL. And something that I actually have always enjoyed about the LJL. And I've talked about this before. But they play around a jungle jungle timers very well. And it just efficiently getting as much gold out of the map as they possibly can. And denying that, that, that resource from the enemy team. V3 are going to be reconvening around the Baron. This is where the pink wards are really going to start mattering is keeping that all shrouded in darkness will mask their intent. As Natsume is going to be wandering up here, he needs to be a little bit careful. Reyna has an opportunity. Enchanted Crystal Arrow flies. That's going to be a hook. That's going to be a dead Natsume. He's going to go oh and 6 This is not a game to be an Aatrox, but this summer split has not been a split to be Axis Gaming as V3. Gonna look for this Baron. They should be able to grab Baron, grab Infernal, and look to end this one. We'll see if Axis go for a contest here. Hoglet's trying to find a way to run up here. Gonna be trying to run down Ace, but really just getting yoinks around here. Carrot on a stick, but this the stick is actually Thresh's Lantern. Enticing them forward and knocking down Corporal for it as a stun from Syndra is going to land there. V3, they don't need to even pursue for a fight. They only need to pressure them off enough to get towards the Infernal Drake here. This will be Baron. This will be Soul. And a 10k gold lead. This is all you... Uh, you can't ask for much more to try to end the game if you are V3 Esports. Boogie, a well-earned MVP of this game. 9-0-6. There's a reason I constantly look to Boogie as the best jungler in the LJL at current, and it's really exhausted in this kind of a game. Still even having 50 CS on his, on his jungle opponent. This isn't exactly a loss you can be too upset about if you are Axis Gaming, as this is definitely a matchup that you did not expect to win. But it is a matchup that I hope that Axis can learn from going forward, as their split has just looked... This game has actually been okay, but their split in general has just been so rough to watch, and 
V3 are going to try to put an end to it here. They're going for one last play, looking to just try and send it all out. Boogie has an opportunity. A beautiful kick onto Union is all that is needed as axes are just going to be routed here. Will they be able to find one? Rain is going to go very low. That's good. Idea. He's going to try to get on, on towards the top side. Pause is going to look to chase him down there. Q slows will be enough, but ultimately keeping him from backing is just the name of the game here. Well, uh, Archer's gonna hunt down the bear, finally finding him in the end. It was actually a beautiful kick over there by Boogie. As Paz is gonna find Gadaidu in his, in their base. Wonder if Gadaidu has anywhere to go. A turret shot's gonna be the end of it all. As one last kill onto Corporal for good measure and. What is ultimately going to be GG for uh, for V3 Esports as they hold on to their perfect record for another week. 8-0 in the split so far. What can you say about this team other than just domination coming out from V3 Esports this split? I have been your host, Dr. No. Thank you very much for everyone tuning in. I do hope you guys have enjoyed the streams. If you guys do enjoy them, go ahead and leave a follow down below. I uh, The way I do things is I do the first four, like the first pod, the first four games tonight, which this was game four, so this will wrap up my set for the tonight. Then I go to tomorrow, same time as this stream started, which is alongside the LJL broadcast. I will be doing the next four games and if you don't if you know you don't want to stay up for those or if you're in not available tomorrow I upload all the VODs to my YouTube so you can follow me down below at my Twitter I will be tweeting those out both when I go live and when the VODs are live other things I also tweet out is a lot of just other general video game content things of what I might be doing outside of LJL content and I do LJL top five plays of the week, so if you're looking for a little highlight reel to get you amped up for the next for the next week, or you want to catch up on the last week, you can check out me over there. Thank you guys all again for tuning in. It honestly means the world to me that we had such a great turnout tonight. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, le legitim 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 Hey, legit. I'm trying. I'm, my brain is trying to process that one all the way through. But if you do enjoy, man, I would really appreciate a follow. No pressure or anything. I will look forward to hopefully seeing you tomorrow if I do get the opportunity. All of that being said, though, guys, thank you very much again for everyone tuning in. I hope you all have a swell night. Uh, I know if you guys were here at the start of the stream, I did have, you know, that whole talk at the beginning. Uh, and... On that subject, I do just kind of want to say, you know, stay safe, guys. I know the world in general is a little bit of a scary place right now, and I do hope that you guys are all safe and secure wherever you are. My best wishes for you guys. If you guys are interested in watching the rest of the LJL content right now, however, and you guys want to stay up for the next four games, there are there is actually another team that I I like that I like very much and I've been I've been having the lovely opportunity to get to talk to them and get to know them uh they do they are the LJL of unofficially official or officially unofficial I believe is their full tag that be uh they do English commentary as well they have a, a small team over there that they work with I will be hosting them if you guys want to watch the rest of the games right now but if you guys do do enjoy my casts I will be doing them again tomorrow. So whatever works best for your guys' schedule, we have options available to you. All of that being said, I hope you guys stay safe. Enjoy some more LJL action coming up soon. And I'll see you guys next week.